Jack, how are you? Mr. Banner, can you get me all right? Yeah, let me give you a good setup. I'm going to get you on my setup real quick. I just wanted to let you know I'm pulling in right now. Awesome, perfect. Take your time. No worries. All right, all right brother. How are you? Actually, you know what? How clean is the sound right now? It's not it bad? It's great. It's perfect to me. No fan or nothing? Nothing. I can hear you great. Loud and clear. Right, let me mute up in Discord for the homies. All right. I'm here. Awesome. Let's do this. Thank you so much. It's so amazing to be joined uh, by the one and only. Uh, Where Zachary. are you from? Well, I'm from San Jose, California. So a little San Jose. Away. Yeah. I've never been, but I've heard good things. It's a good yeah. place to raise your family. You've never been to California? Oh, brother, you, you you know where I went to school. Oh, USC, my bad, my bad. Come on, brother. You know, you never I just haven't been to San Jose yet. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You guys never yeah. been to SJSU at all? Like San Jose State? Yeah. Nah, not when I was there, brother. Okay, okay. Our non-conference was Fresno and uh, Hawaii when I was there for most oh, okay, of Okay, cool. Well, go ahead. Let's do this. I'm excited. <laughs> but, yeah, it's such an honor to be joined by you. Thank you so much. You know, I really appreciate you coming on and helping me out. It's just a true honor. So thank you so much for your time. And I'll try to make it quick for you. I know you don't have a ton of time. Um, but you, just to ask you, I mean, like, was your summer okay? You mentioned your two puppies. What kind of dogs are they? I mean, I mean, yeah, I just got two burner doodles. Uh, okay. me, my, my wife and I, uh, you know, it was a, it, it took a, a strong convincing, right? Because <laughs> yeah. I grew okay. up with short haired dogs. Um, but I've grown to it. They're yeah. cute. They're smart. They're not going to be some small little handbag do handbag dogs either. You know what I mean? So Good. I'm excited about it. Good. Those dogs are irritating. And that, that was my dad, too, because my mom and I, we were trying to convince him we need to get a dog for years. And he finally gave it. He's like, all right, whatever. And now he loves it. I mean, he's, he's just he's what just kind of dog. Uh, yellow lab. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. And did we didn't have a thing for uh, for hair. We would probably do the same. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll bet. I mean, shedding all over the place, huh? The couch. I'll bet you don't let them on the furniture, the bed, huh? Well, you can because they're hyperallergenic. So like, oh, okay. you can but to a certain extent, only when we're there. Okay, cool. Um, did you catch the game last night? Your guys won. <laughs> I did not watch. I, I I did not watch last night's game. Okay, I, I heard it was. Yeah. Unfortunately, my team lost by fifty, so I didn't watch it either. Because by the time I did, it, I did time, see that score. I did yeah. see that score, but no, I didn't watch the game. Being you know, it's different. Um, of course, I would love to watch the Berg every night, but still not being retired a free agent working his tail off, you know, sometimes you miss it too much to watch it. You know what I'm saying? You, Absolutely. You, you, you take a little break from that, but still getting my football in, obviously yeah. I'm training, but I'm also, you know, I, I, I like to stick to a little bit of college right now. That's wonderful. And, and you know, is there any update on how your knees feeling? Is your knee all right? You're, you're knees feeling way better. I'm awesome. lights out right now. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go somewhere and play. I'm just waiting for the right opportunity and for the right phone call. Awesome, man. I'm praying for you, man. You get the right opportunity. That'd be awesome to see you in orange and blue protecting my boy, Russ. That'd be great. I like that. I like um, that. We love but, Denver. Oh, I love it. it it's a, it's an amazing place. Um, but but just to hop into it, like I said, I don't want to take up too much of your time. My first question um, is if you could change one thing about your playing career, if anything, obviously, with the, considering you competed at the highest level, um, it could be during high school, college, or the NFL, what would it be? Wow. Over my playing career, I would have to say, hmm, that's deep. I, I think the one thing that I would change for me personally um, are my habits in my youth and also in uh, during college. And the reason why I said that, I'm talking about my eating habits, okay? Um, I'm a bigger guy. I, I played both sports at a very high level till my second year at USC. Basketball was always, it kept so much weight off of me without me knowing. Right. And then when I stopped and I had to have hip surgery at USC, I ballooned up to a real offensive lineman instead of a both sport athlete. Over the course of my career, changing my eating habits has probably been the hardest. Because right. The reason why is because when you grow up eating two or three packs of Top Ramen with your boys in high school, right? How old are you? I'm a senior in high school, so I know when exactly what you're saying. You're a senior saying. in high school, right? So, like, I remember uh, pregame meals or even, like, going to Red Robin after the game and getting 
two entrees and a, a lot of apps and uh me and my best friend daniel get money together uh uh for after practice we'd go make a 20 dollar mcdonald's run of nothing but mcdoubles you know right. like the eating habits and i've made a lot of changes over my careers over my careers yeah plural right career mm -hmm. um but i think one of the the hardest uphill battles and it's something that i'm going to teach my kids because right you know eating habits and health and stuff is a lot of it's hereditary as well right and not not all of us come from beautiful families where we have a dope adam's apple and <laughs> a nice calm insane. over like you do you know you know i'm sure you can eat a lot right but, you know, history of being a black man and a brown man, also with my island side, you know, you get high blood pressure, right. a lot of those different types of things. That's something I don't even want my kids to blink at. Right. I want them to be aware of it. You get what I'm saying? Teach them yeah. at a young age. But my wife and I, our kitchen is way different than the kitchen I grew up with. Does okay. that make sense? Absolutely. That would probably be the biggest and only thing that I would change. And I, I, I like your answer because especially for me, I play basketball too. I play for my school. And like, like you mentioned, I mean, when you're a two sport athlete, I mean, you can really get away with anything. Oh but yeah, bro. Once and like, I played year round too with with AAU as well. Right. Same here. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, bro, I'm talking about, bro. Like, I remember we 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 played in the Fab 48 tournament, and when I was in high school, that was when EYBL uh, became a thing. Like my my sophomore year and my junior year, my last two years of AAU were the first two years of EYBL. Um, mm -hmm. Traveling, going to Vegas eating Fuddruckers before the game. Yeah. Just bad. Like, what What was I doing? Like, I probably could have dropped 30 instead of 20. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and I mean, you mentioned the YBL. I'm not sure if you know the team. I played for Soldiers in the past. Are you familiar? Yeah, I grew up playing against Soldiers. You, really? you, you, you <laughs> want to know how ridiculous the Oakland Soldiers were when I was growing up? Um, this is – I'm class of 20, 2012. Oakland Soldiers that I went against was – um, you're gonna have to help me with my facts. The 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 white boy that went to Kentucky first and transferred to Gonzaga. He's like a he's like a seven footer shooter. Is Wilcher Kyle? Wil is that how you pronounce his name? Wilcher. Wilcher. Yeah, I think you're Wilcher. Right. I think yeah. it is right. Yeah, you, you can fact check. He was with Oakland. Jabari uh, Parker. Not Jabari Parker. Jabari Brown. No, Jabari Smith. Right. Smith. Maybe. Yeah. There's I a bunch of Jabaris. Um, <laughs> yeah, Huey, yeah. The point guard. Kiwi, I forget his last name, but you can look him up. Oakland Soldiers, Kiwi. Uh, bro, there's somebody. Oh, oh, dunk contest. Dunk contest. Uh, Aaron Gordon. Yeah. Aaron yeah, Gordon. I, mean, I, actually, was, I was like four out of the guys that played for Oakland when I was in high school. And what's funny about Aaron Gordon is that he actually went to a rival high school of mine. So every time we go there to play them, Archbishop Mitty, there's a sign of Aaron Gordon in the, in the gym. So, And I played Jabari. Oakland came up and we won state my junior year in basketball. So the next year we set up a non like out of state uh, game. Uh, Oakland High came up and played us too. My wow. senior year, okay. small world. Cool, yeah, absolutely. So you're a little familiar with my area. I'm um, already knowing, brother. My my second question was another thing too. And and by the way, I know you're trying to keep me to a hard hard time, and I appreciate that. But I liked our conversation. Awesome, um, yeah, works for me. Oakland Soldiers actually are part of the history that the AAU, the AAU rule that got changed, it used to be you can play with whoever you want. Okay. Until Oakland Soldiers um, started flying out. I, I think the team was, the team was crazy. It was already crazy. It was, it was like Tyson Chandler. Right. Um, I know Kendrick Perkins was one of them. Yes. Um, but it's during that time. And they, they, they flew out a bunch of times. They flew out LeBron. LeBron, bro, I, I kid you not. I might have butchered that because Kendrick Perkins might also be from the South. I might be mixing them up with the Atlanta Celtics, where Josh Smith and a bunch of those guys. That might be the team. No, but no, they no. also flew Perkins out. Perkins was on that team. Perkins was on Soldiers. He was on that team. All right, then I already know it. Then it was Kendrick Perkins, Chandler, and they would fly out LeBron too. There was also a guard on that team um, that I forget. But after that, that's when they made the rule that you have to play with an AAU team right. from your state or a neighboring state. Yeah. Yeah. And just to think about how insane that is, right? I mean, even a neighboring state is like, holy. Right. Yeah. Do you hear the dogs? Do you hear the puppies? Yeah, a little bit. I'm sorry. They're playing <laughs> oh, together. I apologize. Dude, I, I know this is the most informal, formal interview. Hey, hey. 
Dude, just to be yeah. joined me is such an honor. So don't worry about it. I got a dog my own and he barks constantly during my interviews. And it just, it's just, gotcha. like, oh my God, be quiet. You know? It's all good. So um, my second question was, how did the experience of playing the NFL differ from the other levels of competition that you experienced? It's right? the best of the best, bro. Like, you already playing for soldiers and you were playing at a high level in high school, you have to realize that what you've done, regardless at the end of the day, you've played at a level that there's guys that will never be able to play at. You get what I'm saying? You're yeah. part of a certain percentage. When that percentage, go, that percentage gets a lot smaller to the next college act. You get what I'm saying? I'm, I apologize. Hey. I apologize, dude. Don't be ridiculous. You're totally fine. Relax. They're pups. It's not a big deal. Um, the, the, the competition level just gets better and better. Yeah, you, you 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 go from you know playing at a high level in high school to being a certain percentage of playing at a high level at USC in the Pac-12 to then playing, I think there's 15. It's it's 53 times 32. You do the math, right? Like that's yeah. how many guys are in the league. Exactly. Including, and then also on top of that is the 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 10 per team practice squad guys. So a lot of grown men out of there out, out here who want the job and are going to do everything they can to keep that job. You know what I'm saying? And so there's training. The competition level is just night and day. I do think going to a school like USC got me ready for that. And the reason why is because, I mean, dude, four star, five stars all the time. Uh, it's, it's, it's a high level program and it's been like that for a very, very long time. It will continue to always be like, you know? And so with that being said, I, I I feel like I was ready for it and and prepared for it a lot more than other schools. Right. Except for the ones that are like us, right? Like Ohio State, Bama, right. you know, those different types. And some of those places already are at the top of their game. I mean, those right. dudes, they're right. they're twos, they're they're twos and threes. There's their second and third string are are getting drafted. Like it's just that's it's I not to put together a dynasty. And I was I was part of the aftermath of a dynasty. Um, I, I did go to a really, really great school, but those sanctions hit really hard. I wasn't there for the sanctions. My first year was the last year we, we, or the first year we were not on sanctions. Okay. So, but we felt the aftermath of it. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's when a lot of teams surpassed us. So it is what it is, but I, to answer your question, probably the level of competition, bro. Every day you're working on your craft because you gotta, you gotta beat the guy that's behind you, but you also got to win in practice and you got to yeah. win in games. You know what I mean? Or else Absolutely. you get replaced. And I was going to say like in college, but then I realized also in the NFL, I mean, not only are you playing against Vaughn Miller, JJ Watt, right. As an offensive tackle, you're also going up against these guys every day in practice. The best player, the best player in the league I was going against was in practice. was TJ. Really? Every, every practice. And you guys, won, you guys on the same side. Yeah, I'm one of them. Just one of them just kicked their football over. Crashed into um, something. Yeah. Every day, bro. Every day, and I knew that. Like, and it was unfortunate that I had the injury um, on Monday Night Football Week One in 2020. It is what it is. You can't change the past. And I'm healthy and I'm ready to go. But it, it's that was one of the best things, bro. Is the best player that you're going to play against is in practice. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of high caliber players and they're all some, most of them are different body types. They all range from different types of rushes. They all range from different types of styles, but I mean, dude, the absolute killer and the best was TJ rushing from a defensive end as a right tackle. TJ. Uh, it's just crazy. Like, like it, it's like a pyramid as the levels of competition go up, right? It just gets thinner and thinner and thinner. Uh, you know, each at each level of competition, you have guys at incredible high school players. I had a friend who was a five star receiver and now he's at Oregon. He's a true freshman, so he doesn't see much playing time. But it's crazy to think like he doesn't wait, that guy doesn't play yet. It's like crazy to me. This guy's a five star, the number four receiver in California, right? So it's just it's absolutely nuts the level of competition that you guys endure and every single day in practice in the NFL going up against TJ Watt and all these other guys. And it, it's yeah. And going up against him, I assume, made you a lot better too, right? Are you kidding? What? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'd imagine. I mean, going up against the best every day makes uh, the rest of the guys you face in the game seem a lot easier. Yes, yes, absolutely.
Um, and my last question for you, if you have the time. Okay. Got you, bro. I'm here for you, bro. Thank you so much. My last question for you is what do you feel is your greatest accomplishment on the field and off the field? Mm. On the field, I hope that I can make it back and start a whole season. But becoming one of 32, because there's only 32 right tackles in the league. Right. That's the term that Coach Tomlin used for me when I first won the job. He's like, you're one of 32 now. How do you become one of one? You know what I mean? That's awesome. Um, that, uh, dude, a lot of people will, you know, ask like, what? You were a two All-American at SC. You were double in, 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 in high school. Like, that, bro. Because I know so many people don't get to experience that. And that's the highest that I've played so far. So that's got to be off the field. Um, shout out to my wife. She's amazing. <laughs> if I was going to give a less simp answer, right, I would probably have to say graduating SC in three years. Wow. That was – that That to me was – first of all, it was difficult. The reason why it was difficult yeah. is because, I mean, obviously you, you're, you're jam-packing. It's it's easier than it sounds because, like I said, it's difficult. But it's easier than it sounds because to work out with the team right. in the off season, you have to be in classes. Okay. So I'm taking summer school. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I interned at Fox for three years. My last three years there, oh, wow. I ended up getting a job. I worked for Colin Coward for three years, brother. Wow, really? He's, he's an amazing mentor, amazing. And I got to I, I, at SC. One of my professors was J.A. Donde. I don't know if you know who that is, NBA, longtime NBA reporter. He's yeah. now, I think, the head of broadcast at, at uh, Northwestern. But he was one of my professors. Um, I'm actually I was able to – huh? I'm actually applying there. Sorry, I hate to cut you off. but that's, Northwestern? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, my grandfather went there. He wants me to apply there. I doubt I'll get in, but uh, – Don't go in with that mentality, bro. Go, go, in, go in confident and get your heart broke if it happens. But if it happens – you deserved it. You hear what I'm saying? Did SC get an application from you or not? No, I'm not going to school in California. I love that. It's fine. I didn't want. I went, didn't want to go to school in Washington. I, <laughs> right. I respect that. Right. I respect that, bro. Get your ass out of that house. You yeah, that's, that's you what, know I'm what I mean. That's exactly. Go experience life. Go experience cold Chicago. It's beautiful. It's oh, my, awesome. My they suck there. at football, but it's an amazing broadcast school. Yeah, yeah. My entire family's from Chicago. That's part of why I'm applying there. Honestly, Northwestern and. Northwestern, I get in arguments with about for a second in broadcast. Clear number one is Syracuse. Yeah, I don't know if you know that already, but yeah. if you okay, I was about to say clear number one is Syracuse. I like to argue with Northwestern guys that we're second, but that's an amazing school, bro. Yeah, and I hope you get into it, and Thanks, you will bro. get into it. And if you don't, it's okay. But I would love to hear the result. Thank if you. Don't I would forget absolutely about me. let you know. And your story of of you know. Being away from the game uh, because of the injury and and just putting everything you have into it is so inspiring to me because I'm a senior now, like I mentioned. I'm playing basketball this year, and I actually uh, I I missed the last two years, and so coming back as a senior now injury playing, that partially a wrist injury, also partially sophomore year, I kind of lost passion for because playing for soldiers, I'm putting so much into it and traveling, and it was like my life basically. So it was just really exhausting, and I just kind of wanted to take a step back. Sometimes we make that decision, but you made the best decision for you. You hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and and God just kind of brought me back this year and just gave me like the the hope in my mind, just a renewed passion for the game. And just hearing that from you is just so reassuring that I made the right decision because you, to do what you love, it doesn't matter the temporary pain you're feeling when you're grinding in the gym or you just, it, it, it's all worth it to do what you love. And when God puts you on the right path. So brother, I am praying for you. You are going you inspire to inspire me, Jack. What happened? You inspire me. Oh, it's mutual. Keep going. And I appreciate those words at the end. Seriously. 